Okay, today we're at UCI. We're going to see Dr. Payam. So let's go right here. And this is his office. Okay, Dr. Wait, you are not Dr. Payam. Who are you? I am Chester. Hey, Chester. <laughs> How's it going, Blackburn Ripon? Great, thank you. Wow, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Cool. How do you like UCI so far? Ah, uh, it's pretty big. I mean, lots of hills, but hey, a lot of good people here. Not awesome. Yeah, today we'll take over Dr. Payam. This is his office. <laughs> what are you going to do for us today? Uh, so I'm going to do two things. Uh -huh. I'm going to solve for the sign of an expression in two ways. One of which you can thank Dr. Payam for with his recent Euler reflection formula. Mm -hmm. And another one using uh, some complex analysis. It's not going to be exactly rigorous, but it's still going to show what I'm thinking of. Awesome. So today I'm going to show you how we can exploit complex analysis to write the sign of any angle you want. It's in a really weird format, but I tr trust me, it works. This is amazing. This is so wow. here you have the sign of X. And if you've ever looked online for what the complex version of it is, you get this nice formula and to quote black pepper pen, <laughs> I like to be on the top. <laughs> so you have, I like to write it like this, helps me out. Okay. And I'm going to put some uh, conditions on the way that I'm going to write it. I'm only going to use the principal root. So in complex world, uh, a lot of what they like to do is they, um, they keep rotating around the unit circle. So I'm just going to restrict it from zero to two pi, just one, one rotation that okay. we're going to have. Okay. And in this, the X, I'm going to replace it to be as pi n. And this will work out very, very nicely for us in simplifying our solution. If you were to use something different, uh, it still have the E in it, and I didn't want that. I wanted it to be nice and simple. As you'll see later, it actually is very simple, just uses some negative ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just plugging this into here. So we have negative i over 2, e to the i pi n minus. And on the principal root, the i is actually equal to, oh, my pen came out, to i pi over two because uh -huh. of where it sits. Uh -huh. And negative one will also be i to the i pi, which we all know and love from our beautiful equations we have found. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the e to the i pi over two, and we're gonna distribute it into those two exponentials and using the distributive property it will come out to something nice and neat mm -hmm. that I can then factor out and I will show you how that goes. Nice, let's see. Okay. So that's just plugging into the E right there. Okay. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show that you actually just are gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna write these two um, quotation marks. And okay. I'm gonna move over to here so I now have more space. Yeah. Okay, so plugging this into here, we now get negative one half, we're gonna have e to the i pi, and then we're gonna have n plus one half, and then minus to the negative i pi n plus i pi over two. And from there, we can factor out a very, very nice um, part of it, and it'll be e to the i pi, and you can take this to be one half minus n. And that comes from the fact that they share um, a certain amount, and this is obviously smaller than that one right there. And don't forget the two in the bottom. And what you get is you get e to the i pi, and then right here is just two n minus one. And all what we're gonna do is we're gonna take negative one equals i to the pi, and we're gonna substitute that back in here. So we have negative one from the negative sign. Then we have negative one from e to that pi, but it's raised to the one half minus n all over two. Mm -hmm. We'll do the same thing here. So we have negative one to the two n minus one. Okay. And so what we're gonna do is since obviously these are the same, we can add this into here and we get negative one 
to the three over two minus n over two, and you get this nice, simple answer for whatever sign will be on the principal branch. And Whoa. what Blackburn Rimpen and I have been working on is sine of 10 degrees. He proved it was irrational, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like in this complex world. So the n value for this, remember that we're gonna define this as pi n. So right now, the n is 1 18th. So at n equals to 1 18th, we get three halves, 1 18th over two, and over here, negative one, plug those in, you get one ninth minus one. And if you do all the math nice and neat onto this, so this becomes 18, 27, minus one, it's 26. So we have 26 over 18, simplify that, get 13 over nine. And ta-da. You oh my God, what is this? A sign of 10 degrees. We now have a complex solution for it. And in another video, I'm gonna show you how we can write it using factorials. Yes. And then you can do this with whichever end that you want. Whatever end you want. Works for all of them. How about one over 180? You just have to replace the end. And I'm, I'll do it for you right here. So N in this case is gonna be 180, so okay. that would be one degree technically. Okay. And so you have negative one, three halves minus one over 180 uh -huh. over two. And you have negative one to the 190th. It's one. Okay, so multiply that by 90, you get 270, you get 269. And those don't simplify, so you have negative one to the 269. Oh my God. 180 to negative one to the 190th. <laughs> and this is gonna give us sign of one degree. And he'll put up a, uh, a little picture of what Wolfram Alpha, and you'll see that this matches 100% to what it's supposed to be. Wow. And by the way, earlier I noticed that you didn't simplify this negative one to the two n power. How come? Uh, so, one thing to keep in mind is that in the complex world, negative one is all over the place because of its relation to i pi. Okay. So, a lot of people they might want to break it down into negative one squared, turning it into one to the n. Mm -hmm. But you actually don't want to do that in this case. So say for right here, when we use 180, it turns into one ninth. And obviously, well, if we would have done it this way, it would have been the one hand, one over 180 over one, which would have just been one. But we obviously know that this does not equal one because mm -hmm. it's in the complex world. I and see. so this, this little, um, I guess you could call it the quagmire of the equation, is a really big thing that you do not want to simplify. Oh my god. Wow. I'm shocked. Seriously, I've never seen that before. That's why I thought it was kind of ingenious, because I, I thought of it when I was on Quora, and I was looking at somebody solve sine of 54 degrees. He did something super similar to this, and I was like, that's ingenious. Let me do it for 10. Wow. And then now you just did sine of 1 degree. So you can pretty much do whatever you want, which whatever end that you want. And if a professor tells you you're wrong, they're wrong. Whoa, okay, okay. Did you show Pandas already? You did, huh? Yes, yes okay. I did. Man, I should have recorded his reaction too. He, well, I'll give you, I'll give you my best pi m. Okay. He looked at it and he kind of went like this and then he saw me write this little portion here and he went, is that really it? And then I showed him this and he was like, <laughs> That's exactly my reaction too. Like he did that little oh my walk, god! He did that little walk back, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" Ladies and gentlemen, sign of one degree. Whoa! Hey, homie. <laughs>